It's a warning. See, so that's a warning. Look out means be careful. Be on guard. So he looked out, gets it in the head. Allah says, for you wait. <coughs> this is not waiting. It's a warning. Like you bully some little fellow here, and he tells you, uncle, you wait. I'll bring my brother. And his brother, you know, by reputation, is the biggest hooligan in this area. <coughs> in Weinberg, in Weinberg. Yeah, the biggest hooligan in Weinberg is his brother. I'm asking, will you wait? You'll wait for him. He said, look, you wait, uncle. I'll bring my brother and come. And you're going to wait. When you know his brother is the biggest hooligan in this area, biggest bully, you wait. No, no, he's telling you to wait, but you run for dear life. <laughs> because you know what to expect if he comes. So Allah says, Fatara Basu, you wait. Hatta yati Allah bi amri until Allah's decision comes about for your destruction. You wait for that. They waited for 800 years. Allah says, You wait, and they waited. Allah is a subu, He is long suffering, patient. 800 years He gave you a chance to come right. And 800 years you didn't do the job. So he says, yes, tabdil qawman ghayrakum. He will substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakum wa mthalakum. And they won't be like you. And he displaced them. Finished. Gone. Gone to the dogs. There was not one Muslim left after 800 years to give the azan. We are here for 300 years. Can you imagine after 300 years, wiped out by a man, not one guy left in this country to give the azan. Worse than that, after 800 years, not one fellow left in that country to give the azan. This is the punishment. You don't do your job, say change, get out of the way, you're rubbish. You don't do your job, you don't deserve to be khair ummatin. You come to Baghdad, Samarkand, Bukhara, and the Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, veritable fairyland. They created a veritable fairyland. The type of scenes, buildings, <coughs> and the gardens and the fountains that existed, you can't reproduce them anymore except on the screen. On screen you can do anything, you know, in the films. In real life, no more. On the borders with the Mongols, barbarians. Will they deliver the message of Islam? No, no, no. <laughs> what can they understand about Islam? Same with the Buddha, what can he understand? The Bushman, what can he understand? The Bantu, what can he understand? That's a mentality. Same. What can they understand about Islam? <laughs> barbarians, barbarians. You, were you better than they, your forefathers? No. Allah's kalam could change you, but can't change them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Allah says, Fatarabas, you wait. And they waited. At the very hands of these very people, Allah destroyed them. The same barbarians, they put the Muslims in the dark. Destroyed the Islamic empire utterly. That even today, the shocks of that defeat is still not gone out of, out of our blood. The shock of those defeats is not gone out yet. All these problems, problems and all that, that started there. The shocks of those defeats. They conquered us and they demoralized us utterly. <coughs> History tells us, I'm ashamed even to tell you. History tells us that these Mongols, these barbarians, one, one guy, one guy alone, one guy, he can lead a hundred Muslims like sheep and goats. One man alone can say, come on, go! A whole lot of God, no one. And he'll, like sh shepherding the one guy can do it to a hundred. And it is told to us, history tells us, that the Muslim somehow, you know, collided with one of these Mongols in the street. And the Mongol lost his temper. He said, bend down, I'll chop off your head. The Muslim bent down. He says, I forgot my sword at home. He says, you wait, I'm coming. <laughs> you wait, I'm coming. And the man went home, he brought his sword. The Muslim is still bent down, he's still waiting. So utterly demoral. You can't even run away. Please, you reached that stage. You didn't do your job. Now comes a punishment. That the man tells you, you bend down and wait till I get my sword to chop off your head and you can't even run away. It's a feel ashamed even to tell people, say, look, this is what we had come to, Muslims, Muslims. Why? You didn't do your job. Allah says, yes, tabdil qawman ghayrakum. He'll substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakum wa masalakum. And he substituted them. By these very Mongols, the Turks, 
they, later on they became Muslims and they started helping the Muslims. But for in the first instance, destroyed them all because you didn't do your job. We Muslims, we ruled India for 1,000 years. 1,000 years we ruled India. Eventually when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarter. Why? You didn't do the job. You didn't do the job. And even now you don't want to do the job. Even today, wallah, the only solution to the Muslims of India, my motherland, there are 150 million Muslims, they are a minority. And imagine, a minority of 150 million? Five times the total population of South Africa, men, women and children, Indian, African, colored and whites, all put together, five times that amount of Muslims in India, and they are a minority. And they can do nothing. Daily, average of three riots are taking place against the Muslims every day. Nobody will believe you in my own motherland. Why? You didn't do the job. Today, solution to your problem is deen. Propagate. No, you won't do it. You want excuses. He said, look, we are not perfect ourselves. What an excuse. Look at us. How many of us got beards? It's very few. How many of us make, come for salah five times a day? Very few. You expect today we are a thousand million. You expect everybody to be angels. Everybody to have standard sized beards, everybody to wear kurtas. Huh? Is it possible? Thousand million, all become five time prayers. You don't sin anymore, you don't drink, don't govern, nothing. Yeah, you are perfect angels. Thousand million. You know what will happen? Allah doesn't need that. He doesn't need all angels walking this earth. He's got plenty of angels saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. He wants you and me that you fall. You make a mistake and you cry. He loves that. He loves that. Everybody is an angel. Like robots, five times a day we are here. Fasting, we are perfect. Zakat, we are perfect. Everything, we are perfect. That's all right. He says, wipe you out. Finish. Okay. Jannah is there for you. <laughs> he doesn't need you. That type of people who do that, Sui, Subhanallah, Tasbi, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. He's got billions, billions of angels doing that. What is he going to do with you? <laughs> he doesn't need you. Wallah, he doesn't need you. He wants you as you are. Fall down, wake up, cry. Walk again. Fall down, wake up, cry. He loves that. <coughs> Not to say that you must become sinners. You make an effort. That's what he wants. He knows that you are weak. A khulikal insan of I says he's made man weak. He are weak. He wants, he knows you are weak. He appreciates your shortcomings. He appreciates you falling down and trying to get up. Good enough in his sight. But when will the day come that we are all perfect? Never! Never! Allah, never! You can never be a thousand million angels walking this earth. And you're waiting for that before doing your job. In the meantime, the enemy is going to wait for you. You want to become perfect here before opening your mouth. You won't propagate Islam because you're not perfect. I want to know when will all the Malays be perfect? And the Indian Muslims, you know, the Parkars and what the Paflankar and Bandarkars all become perfect. When? 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 Is it possible? No. Then you'll never start. In the meantime, the Christian is making inroads. He's stealing our children. In so many different ways, we are losing. By marriage, we are losing. You go and marry a colored girl, nominally you convert her, nominally. Make her to read the Kalima, Shahada. Make her to say, teach her to say, Salaam Alaikum. And then, the marriage breaks up, where does she go? With your Fatmas and your Khadijas and your Muhammads, where does she go? Back to her aunties and her grannies. Your Muhammads and Fatmas and Khadijas are getting, going to church. You know that? We have lost thousands like that, thousands we have lost. You die, where does she go? Back to her aunties and her grannies. And your Fatmas and Muhammads and Khadijas are getting Christianized. Thousands we have lost. So careless we are. Just bring the name. <laughs> Take her to the shah. Make her to read the kalima. Shahada. I say, you want to marry this man? Say, yeah. And nikahum in sunnati. For man rakiba in sunnati. For laysa minni of kama kaal. Say, right. Okay, now you got the license. Go and procreate. 
my dear children, my young people, I'm very happy tonight I see so many young faces. In the other places I didn't find so many young faces. When you take that step, make sure that this wife that you're going to convert, you can make her a better woman, better Muslima than your mother at home, than your sister at home. If you can't do that, don't tempt providence, don't take a chance. Unless you can make her better than your mother at home, better than your sister at home, which you can't. Which you know. This is just a conversion of convenience. That everybody says, well, she's a Muslim now. What Muslim? Do you pray in the house? No. You think she's going to pray? No. You yourself are not good Muslim. How are you going to make her a good Muslim? Your family is not good Muslim. You know, we know, we know. How are you going to make her a good Muslim? So losses upon losses, losses upon losses. Excuse for not propagating. What do you say? We are not perfect. In India, solution to a problem is to propagate. They won't. They won't propagate. This is the answer to your problem, Wallah. And there is a group of people. There are a group of people there whom we consider to be of the lowest rung of the ladder. You just woo them with a little gentleness. Wallah, you can just gather them in. I went to my motherland after 50 years. I left that country in 1927. I returned to that country in 77, after 50 years. I did go. Then I go to one of the villages. And in that village I saw that the natives of the place, they look like us, they haven't got woolly hair, but they do the menial work for us. The native of the place, they are hero worshipping us. We are like gods. Like the Afrikaner is like a god. To us, oh bas, bas. Same thing there, that that Indian, the laborer, he's looking up to us like a god. So I says, man, that's very good. Very good relationship, you know. That means you can just call them. You just call them and they happen to you. They need, they dare not refuse. So I'm telling my host, I said, look, in the village, tell them that all these laborers, I want them to come tomorrow morning with the wives and the children. Come here tomorrow morning. I want to talk to them. By royal command, as if they were all there, wallah. Next morning, all the men and the women and the children, they are there. Seated on the ground in the dust. I sit on the little stool and I speak to them telling them about my origin. My forefathers were also Hindus. Originally, they were every Indian. For 5,000 years we were Hindus. I don't know whether you know. Your great-grandfathers were Buddhists. 